are you making these 10 thumbnail mistakes that new creators often make? Let's find out. Mistake number one is using a blank stale color for the background of your thumbnail. I've seen this time and time again. A simple way you can combat this is using a gradient. So basically that's a mix of two colors. One is lighter, one is darker. You can actually do these in Canva for free and design these gradients. You'll literally go from something like this to something like this. Mistake number two is making your text a color. Now, most of the reading we do on the internet, it's either the text is white or the text is black. Not all these different colored things. So when you do that with your thumbnails, it just doesn't look professional, especially if you don't know what you're doing and you're not a designer. So as you're getting started making thumbnails, just use white text or black text because it's a lot clearer and easy for people to read. Mistake number three is using cursive style writing slash bad fonts. Now, please don't hate on me. I was born in 1996, which makes me like a millennial, but also makes me like a Gen Zer. And cursive is really hard for me to read. And I'm sure it's hard for a lot of other people to read when you use those types of fonts. It's not very clear. We're trying to communicate a clear message. So don't use those cursive fonts. I'm sure I'm not the only person who has trouble reading cursive writing. Mistake number four is having nothing behind white text. Let me show you some examples here. So you'll notice on top there's text without anything behind it and then the next three you got shadow, you've got a black outline, and you just have a black background. Those three actually stand out more compared to the one with nothing behind it. And depending where that text is sitting it might not even be visible because there's nothing behind it. So always make sure you at least have shadow, a black outline, or at least a black background to help stand out from the background and people can actually read your text. Number five is that there's too much going on in your thumbnails. You have text here, you've got elements and stickers here, you've got this, that, and the other. Your thumbnail should really only send one message to someone. So it either needs to send, look at this, this is really interesting. It should provoke your curiosity and you should click because of it. Or number two, there is value in this video and you can tell because it's going to solve this pain point or it's going to benefit you this way or it's going to help you reach this end goal. Number six is unnecessary information. Again, we want our thumbnails to be super simple. So if you have too much in there, there's too much for our eyes to look at. Simple is actually better with thumbnails. So don't just throw a bunch of stuff on there for the sake of it being a very, you know, complex thumbnail and that'll cause people to click. No, simple is better. Just communicate a message to me and skip the complexity. Number seven is repeating the title word for word in your thumbnail. Your title's on the side, we can read it. You don't need to repeat it word for word in the thumbnail. I would say for like max for text in your thumbnail, you'd only want like three, four words max in your thumbnail. So that way it is a quick communication. Someone can glance, they can read it, they can understand and also look at the title to get further context and then they can decide if they're gonna click or not. But don't overcomplicate it. Don't shove a ton of text in there. No one's gonna read it all. Mistake number eight is not looking at your competitors, okay? They're in the same niche as you. They've grown an audience, a big audience potentially. They've already gone through all the work of figuring out which thumbnails works for that audience. So you can look at your competitors who have the same audience as you and get inspiration from their thumbnails. Chances are they know what's working and have already made all the mistakes years ago that you can just skip past and get inspiration from them. Mistake number nine is not comparing your thumbnail to others in that topic section. So once you have designed that thumbnail, whatever you're making the title of your video or a topic of your video on, search for that on YouTube, look at those thumbnails. And then what you're gonna do is screenshot those thumbnails, just throw it into Canva, then add your thumbnail over the top of other competitors and see how your thumbnail compares to theirs. Would you actually click on your video over theirs or is yours look like a rookie thumbnail compared to theirs looking well designed? Based on that, you can see, oh, my thumbnail really blends in next to theirs. I should change the color of the background to make it stand out more. And by doing that, you can make a better thumbnail than someone else's by strategically comparing yours to the other ones that are gonna be right next to you, either in the suggested tab or in the search results. Number 10 is not paying attention to the click-through rate in your YouTube analytics. Now, once you've designed that thumbnail and you upload it and you've followed all of these steps, 
you need to watch your analytics and see if people are actually clicking. You might think it's a good thumbnail, but it doesn't matter what you think. It matters what your audience thinks and the people who are actually seeing your thumbnail on YouTube. If you get a click-through rate anywhere from 5% to 20%, it's usually a really good click-through rate. Uh, but you also have to take a look at your impressions because you want high impressions, high click-through rate. That's a sign of a very good thumbnail and you shouldn't touch anything. So maybe give your thumbnail a few weeks, see how it does. And if it's not performing, update that thumbnail to try and get that video to take off more. You've already put in hours of work into the video. Let's make sure it takes off by making the best thumbnail possible so we can get people to click on our videos. Speaking of which, I actually have a bonus for you. I've designed 20 thumbnail templates within Canva that you can use for free for making awesome thumbnails. Just click the link down below, enter your email. I'll send you a link. All you have to do is sign into Canva through that link. It'll add the templates into Canva and you can use them however you want. And I use these same templates all the time in my thumbnails. So definitely recommended. And if you're looking for more content to watch, be sure to check this playlist right here of all my YouTube tips. So that way you can grow your channel, scale your audience, and hopefully make money doing something you love. So check out that playlist and I'll see you guys later.